And Beckham saw Sullivan off his line. Oh! This is a private member's bar. That is absolutely phenomenal. Exclusively for the supporters of the greatest football team in the world. Cleared. Geeks with a shot. Jerry Manchester United. Beckham. Into Sheringham. And so Sarah has won it. New season, same injury problems. United lose their second match of the preseason. And it might not be the Dutch delight with Delit. Afternoon delight. I don't know why that drop just stopped dropped in my head there, D. Um, all right, side try. You see, my mind's all over the place, and we're not even thirty seconds in. Uh, welcome to the Biggie and Smalls podcast. I'm Keith Ippolito, my partner in crime, D. How you doing, my man? Not much, not much. Uh, you know, in Atlanta, it's been pretty rainy all week, so I guess that uh, was indicative of the injury situation. That continues to plague this team. Uh, let's kick it right out the bat. I mean, Jesus. Uh, <laughs> uh, we bring our basically Euro, and uh, you, you know, seems like it's not good. And Hoyland with a possible hamstring or whatever. I mean, all right. I think we. I think I read somewhere we had sixty-six injuries last year. We're already at two. Let's start the clock or the counter. It was debut against Rangers, and he seemed to do well. Um, he looked like what it looked exactly what all United fans were hoping he was going to look like. You know, comfortable in the ball, command, and uh, showed a good turn of pace. And um, then he obviously got to play against Arsenal in his second match in United College. But then, as we all know, after 33 minutes, he had a specific injury that literally, like he he seemed a little. Um, I wouldn't say a little. He actually seemed very distraught about it. And as we talked, yeah. About it, think, um, who was it? Um... Can't remember the Hannibal. Arsenal play. Yeah, Han- yeah, because yeah, I, I French for, uh, French player, so seemed like he was tr- like consoling him or whatever. Pro- you know, yeah. na- native French speaker or whatever. So I mean, it, it, yeah, it looked uh, look con- looks concerning to say the least, and that's no, putting exactly. it politely. Yeah, now you, yeah, Hannibal went over to try to console him, and then as we talked about offline, one of the uh, I don't know which member of the staff, the, the coaching staff or the, the team, uh, <laughs> staff in general yelled uh, had a big. Uh, audible not safe for work word yeah happened, it was so. a certain four letter word and i think it started with f yeah yeah and right and it rhymes with duck so um <laughs> we'll leave it at that it doesn't yeah some uh young, youngsters listening but no and then we have then good old hoyland after scoring the good goal that he did you know he showed a good turn of pace some strength and good you no know, good finish as well but then he comes off as well injured so like you said, we're going to have to start the counter now in preseason. It's not even August yet, and we're already down two potential starters uh, before, like, like, like you mentioned, before even Community Shield. We don't even know if we're even going to have a full-strength squad <laughs> for the Community yeah, Shield. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I I'm, I'm, I would not expect it. I mean, I, I out of the two, I mean, it seems like Hoyland has the best shot of coming back the quickest, but I, I feel like the Community Shield's two weeks away, I believe. I mean, hamstring injury, I mean, you just never know how that's going to, you know, play out. And and to be 100% honest, not that I don't want to win the community or the charity shield, is that I, I think I if he's not 100%, I don't want him playing in that. I'd rather have him be 100% for the start of, for the season and, you know, I, everything else. That's that's just my personal opinion on that. No, I don't agree with that. Like, I... I... Is it a match? Is it, is it a good kickstarter for the season? Um, now that you always see the stat that the, the team that wins the the charity shield or community shield um, goes on to win the premiership. Like, but again, like that's not, yeah. I don't know if you know you know. I'm hoping you guys can be up there challenging, but let's know as I want to be completely realistic as possible that I don't think they're going to be up there yet. But you never know. It, we'll see what happens with that. But like the one one thing I thought was very interesting was after the match, Ten Hag came out and said that uh, he is concerned. That Lenny Yo might be out for a considerable amount of time uh, with the injury, and it looks muscular, mm-hmm. but we don't even know mm-hmm. what it does now. We know we know Hoyland's is a hamstring. Mm-hmm. Um, Hoyland seemed to be able to get up and walk off, you know, with very uh, very little resistance. Yeah, to, I know he did. So I mean, that's encouraging, but you know, yeah. Yo seemed to be a little bit more uh, delicate, if you will, when he was getting up. And then the one stat that really annoys me was that you know, one Euro is only eighteen, but they said before joining United. Uh, he only missed six days of training through injury at his, mm-hmm. at, no, at his, at his, yeah, yeah. so it's like, 
I don't know what's going on. He's only been at United for two weeks, and he's already missed, he's already missed a sixth. I, I know it, it's like I, you know what the hell is going on here. It's like, and you know that was like like we first started talking. It was like, especially the Rangers match. I was like, wow, this is you know really impressive because obviously I, I'm sure you're the same. It's not like I'm watching League One games regularly. So I mean, I had seen him play, but you know when you are able to actually you know, watch a full 90 minutes and see the whole thing. Like, he's really impressive. I was like, I was really excited. You know, I think he could, you know, be an integral part of the team, but Jesus, like the, one of our first major signings already gone. So, okay. All right. Yeah. Yep. So, and it was, I, I was speaking of that too, like with major signings, I know that, that this sort of transitions into the next one we're going to talk about. It was a good old, what is going on with Brent Wilson Everton? Like, I, <laughs> Right now, man, I I don't know, man. I feel like that's like trying to figure out or solve a Rubik's cube, but at least for me. Well, as a United fan, like, uh, it wouldn't be a summer transfer window without a very dragged, yes, prolonged transfer. Yeah, like we've yeah. had it every single season. Like, yeah, Central we've every so, single we've had you know fax machines. We've had drawn out. We've had you just it, it wouldn't be something without some kind of drama in the transfer window. Exactly. So, no, they, they, this is just this is another one you're gonna. It's gonna be uh, put on the long list of drawn out transfer uh, sagas that we're gonna have. But from what I'm, from all the reports are saying is United still have him at the top of the list uh, for their defensive transfer target. Like they have the lit as an as earmarked as well. Um, yeah. And I don't know what exactly. I, I think Ten Hag may be trying to fortify the team in ter- in terms of like squad depth. Because mm-hmm. of the fact that like United had to play Casemiro in centre back last season, so I think he's got like Maguire, yeah. Evans, Lindelof. Uh, then he's got Euro, who's now injured. Um, and then with Varane leaving, I think he's looking to bring in maybe one or two more players, so he has at least four to five centre backs that mm-hmm. quality centre backs he can play on. Yeah. But from what I'm reading, that Everton aren't interested whatsoever uh, in selling them for cheap. They're looking for that Harry Maguire. Yeah, type, Trent, yeah, they seem dead stuck on this. 75 million price tag and um yeah i don't know i mean um i know they have some rumors about his potential replacement but yeah they're definitely playing stubborn or they're you know being very stubborn no oh definitely yeah like, from what i've heard as well as that like well they're i suppose in talks it's, it's gonna actually gonna happen i haven't seen anything from good old uh Fabrizio, but um from what I've what I've heard now is that they're going to sign a six foot six giant from Lyon. It was Jake, it was a Jake O'Brien. For, oh uh, yeah, about fifteen to twenty million. I think they're going to get him. For mm-hmm. Um, so is he going to come in to be, you know, Brant White's replacement, or is he going to be? From what I'm reading too, that uh, he might actually be trying to use him as a sort of almost like a, a bargaining chip to convince Brant White to stay to say, hey, that's going to be our partner. Yeah, I mean that. Yeah, that that very well could be their, you know, what they're trying to do. I mean, because by all accounts, it doesn't seem like he is intending to sign an extension. So, I mean, if you're Everton, I mean, you know, you could be, you know, stuck on your price tag or whatever. But, you know, if you're if he's not coming back, that's a gamble that you know he might walk away and they might not get hardly anything, get nothing at all. You know, exactly. So. Yeah, like Sean Deitch is obviously like he he just looking at him and listen to his voice. He's definitely definitely the best personification of Everton right now. But um, <laughs> but uh, we'll see with with Fred White. Like from what I've heard, is he's he has no intent. They want to tie him down to another. Like I think they want to put another three years on his contract. I think his contract's up in like July twenty twenty seven. Um, but what I'm hearing is that he's not willing to sign the contract. But there's a big unless. Everton, he's not expecting Everton to match the wages that United are, you know, reportedly offering him. But mm-hmm. He just wants to sort of see him get within that sort of that area. In that area, yeah. Yeah, and then that that will, you know, it's that'll convince them saying, "Listen, you want me just as bad as United do, so I'll all be willing to stay." Like at the end of the day, everyone's going to turn around and say, "Oh, the, no, where's the loyalty in football? That loyalty in football went out the window a long time ago. And right now, it's it's a business. It's a money making business." Yeah, I mean. It, I mean, it's, it's, yeah, it's honestly, it's, I mean, it's always been a business. I mean, you know, as fans, of course, you know, you know, you, you never want to see your favorite players go or, you know, or even, you know, go to arch rivals or whatever. But yeah, I mean, it's 100% is a business and, you know, I, you know, put myself in their shoes, you know, 
the the owners, the people at the top, they would drop them in a in a blink of an eye. So I mean, at the same, they have to. They only have a you know a period of say if their career is ten, fifteen years, they've got to maximize that ten or fifteen years to where they can get the most money. And I'll I'll never fault a player for doing that. No, exactly. Like the one, I think the, one, the only time I'll ever fault a player is if somebody like Neymar, like if somebody's in his prime, decides to go into like Saudi Arabia. <laughs> oh like, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I can understand, but I know that's money. But yeah, with the, with this transfer, it's just another one that's just going to be dragged out. Now, do I think United are going to get him? And let like the one thing that United need to use as a, the biggest uh, uh, obstacle is going to be the price tag. But United mm-hmm. need to just turn around and say, listen. We paid eighty million for McGuire because McGuire McGuire was on was like he yeah was he was the team of the yeah he was the yeah team of the exactly when United signed him so yeah um, he played well he you know he ended up he deservedly was able to get that big price tag now Brand White didn't even make the England squad so. yeah I mean so I mean honestly yeah honestly if I was United I'd be like you know this is where we're at I mean and it sounds like there's other options that are potentially on the table. Um, you know, I was reading about, um, you know, what's that Moroccan kid at Bayern Munich that they're interested in. And well, they, they, they they, 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 this kind of made me chuckle is that supposedly he is, <clears throat> excuse me, he would be a, uh, a great compliment to Anthony and he would turn into the star he was at Ajax. I, I'll, I'll believe that when I see Jesus Christ walk on water. Uh, I don't, uh, yeah, I don't even. I don't even know what even to say about that. I don't think anything can compliment that at this point. But yeah, that the, from what well, what I've heard is that they're you know, you know there's actually they agreed terms with them, personal terms again. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's uh, is it Nusayir uh, Marawasi or is it yeah Marawasi? Ma- Ma- yeah, no, I believe. Or is it Maserati? I think, you're thinking my, yeah, Maserati. I know he's Mar- I know he's Moroccan. Yeah, so I'm I, we're, I'm put, I'm butchering his name and I, I know so, but I, I know it's it's a Masru- Maserati. Yeah, or, yeah. Uh, yeah. He played. He played for Ten Hag at uh, at at Ajax, and I'll say that. But at the same time, I don't know. If I, I, so far, the only player that's actually came through that came over from Ajax that actually is worth this price tag and everything else has been good old you know, Licha. Licha, Licha mm-hmm. is like unbelievable. Um, so, like I know, I mentioned earlier, the the, the there's five centre backs you now have. Like there's Hoyland, Maguire, Evans, Euro. I didn't mention Leach because Leach is a, he's he's going to be starting left center back. It's it's all mm-hmm. the rest of them now to, to prove to Ten Hag that they can actually be the right center back to be his partner. Yeah, exactly. Leach, Leach is too good. Like he's 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 another player that I could dear Mark. I know we mentioned in the previous podcast about so Kobe Mainu being captain, but Leach mm-hmm. could easily be captain as well. Um, but yeah, we'll see. Like, we'll see what happens with the brand play. Like I'm, am I am I going to be? Am I going to be upset that it, yeah, it didn't sign him? No. Nah. But yeah, yeah like, you know, on it, I I'm kind of with you on that. Like, sure, would I love to bring him in? But I I you know I'm not sure I would want to pay seventy five million for him. Yeah, exactly. Like, like is he good? Is he good? I think he's a great player. He's yeah. He, he, he pops up with the all goal forever and here and there, and he you know he is. He does look a solid player when he does play. But at the same time, like, is it is he worth? No, United, the Ineos group is trying to get away from this whole playing way overinflated transfer uh, transfer fees. If they if they go in there and pay 75, 80, 85 for Bradley, they're, they're, they're repeating. The yeah, they're just the going back to the same old policy, yeah. basically. They're, they're going back to the and, and teams will and, and teams will see that and they'll be like, oh, all right, well, all right, new owners, but it's business as usual at United. Yeah, exactly. And there, there was, I, I don't know if it's even true. This is another. I heard that there was a, a young Brazilian that a lot of the European teams are looking into, and uh, I suppose the United sort of put a little bit of interest in him, and all of a sudden, like the kids' transfer fee tripled, <laughs> and it's only because Manchester United got involved. Yeah. that's what they're all saying. No, what? No, that's, I, no, I think a lot of the source that's probably from like the Sun or something. So we'll, yeah, we'll that see. I feel that could probably be you know the family member or an agent or whatever trying to boost that tag up. Well, exactly. And then, so, like, I think this is going to be the first season, though, that, you know, Ten Hag, again, has been backed by the, by the you know, by the club in terms of purchasing players and getting players in. So now it's up to the up to the, him and the coaching staff to really get the best out of the players that they brought on, uh, to get the best out of the players that they have at the club. Yeah. And he's definitely one that's going to, uh, has an asterisk of, like, if he does, if he's not gone, from what I've read, too, Andy, 
the seek tax is supposed to be coming up for him. They posted. Yeah, they're, they're yeah. They, it, I I would be surprised to see him back. It seems like there is genuine interest at all, several teams. So yeah, I'd I'd be surprised to see him back. I I would be I would be kind of surprised to see. Well, I don't know. I yeah no. I was gonna say Sancho. I I don't expect to. I don't expect him back because I. I was listening to a podcast and I was and I then I started scrolling through United Social and he's not featured on it very much so they must be not not planning to have him be a part of this season. I as I said I think he's I think that like which I'm totally fine time. with. Yeah, I'll same here. I think what we talked about it previously I think Ten Hag coming out saying you no know, they put the pass behind him and all that kind of stuff. I think that was just a sort of ensure that United get the best possible price for him because if they were, like I said, if they were to come out and say 10 Ag doesn't want them, the teams are going to come in and be offering. Yeah, because they know they're going to be desperate to offload them just because they don't want to deal with any crap in the locker room. So instead of the 30, 35 million that I'm, I'm seeing, even sometimes there's, some, there's sometimes there's 40 being rooted mm-hmm. for them. Teams, if they hear that, that he's still, still disgruntled, 10 Hag doesn't get along with them. He, you know, he's, he's causing low chaos in, in, the, in the change room, in the locker room. Mm-hmm. He's going to come in and offer ten fifteen for him because they're just yeah. going to say, "Listen, let him, let let him let us take him off your hands and yeah, let him off yeah, thing. exactly. Let us let us deal with it and see if we can resurrect his career." Yeah. So the thing here is that if Anthony, I think if Anthony does if Anthony does leave and go to and goes to Besiktas, I think Sancho stays. But I think if Sancho leaves, I think Anthony stays because I think it's it's about yeah. That would be time. hard to have both leave and then because realistically, I I don't see us bringing in another player and, you know, transfer window closes in a little over a month. I mean, sure, is it possible? But, uh, I mean, I, I just, I don't think it's realistic. Yeah, exactly, especially with wingers. And, like, mm-hmm. so, like, and this is, this is something, another point we wanted to talk about with, with Van Nistelrooy coming in. There's, new, like, there's a whole new coaching staff, but one of the guys mm-hmm. that's really, that we all know as United fans is Rude Van yeah. Nistelrooy. And you and I talked a few a few times about this in the offline, and we were talking about like, his, this new, He's very hands on with the team, and he's very hands on in the in the in the attacking sense. Yeah, um, yeah. In a sense where this is where we talk about where I, I think that I don't think Anthony and Sancho will. I don't think both will leave because Van Nistelrooy is trying to implement this new. We all know as United fans, we watch them, uh, but Van Nistelrooy is trying to um, introduce. Hey. This, it says new, but it's the old way United playing that the 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 wings the wingers just stay yeah. In the, 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 the the Murad and overlapping left and right mm-hmm. back, you know, guy now stuff that we basically, back. you know, you know what we were used to watching, watching basing yeah. our whole you know, whole life, basically. Exactly. So he's trying to get back to that. So, and that's honestly, I think I remember we talked about it the, like before that I think Van the Sony scored like maybe one goal outside the box. So he's the fox yeah. in the box mentality. So mm-hmm. I think he's trying to really encourage the wingers and the playmakers of the Brunos of the team, the Ericsons of the mm-hmm. team, the Mason Mounts. To really start understanding that teams are going to set up low blocks and get very congested in the midfield because they're going to try to like stifle United's attack and then set themselves up for a counterattack. So the best way to break down a team is to get wide to stretch them out because the yeah, stretch them out back. and yeah, exactly. I mean, God Almighty, it's just like you know, think back to the teams of the past. You know, I mean, we'd always had great wing play. I mean, or um, you know, I can even remember you know whether it was. You know Beckham, Giggs, Ronaldo, but even just like those overlap runs from you know the you know the wing back wing backs or whatever, we always had teams like that, and I, that's obviously has been missing for some time yeah. with us. No, exactly, because like with Beckham and uh, Beckham right there, but yeah, Gary Neville overlapping them. Yeah, there, Gary Neville. Yeah, uh, you know, got uh, 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 Patrice Everett uh, on the left side. Uh, on, Erwin, yeah, like, yeah. Even Ashley Young at one stage. Yeah, Ashley left, Young left, for a time. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Antonio, mm-hmm. Antonio Valencia, who used to be mm-hmm. a right winger, Ashley Young yep. used to be a winger, and they, they both converted into left back and right back. So they, they mm-hmm. were always getting forward. It, yep. it, caught, it, it created a different dynamic for United to get forward. So, yeah, what, what, I've, what I've read and what I've seen and you know, read reports about it, that Van Nistelrooy is really trying to drive it, uh, drive it into the team about, you know, not only trusting one another, but really understanding that I think the United is trying to get away from this stupid. Say it wide and then cutting back in on, on like for example, Anthony, everybody in their granny knows Stevie Wonder <laughs> can see what Anthony's going to do before he gets the ball. He knows he's yep. going to go down the wing and he's going to yep. come back in that left foot. He's either going to try to cross yep. it or he's going to yep. try to keep one inside and have a shot. So yep. 
at that, at that point, with teams setting themselves up so congested and they have that low block that's literally almost inside their own box and they have another another block in front of the midfield. Yeah. Hoyland's not going to get any service when somebody like an Alan Shearer said it, they said it perfectly. Like it was it earlier last season when he said that Anthony playing with that, it would drive him absolutely nuts because by the time you're making a run, by the time you're sitting trying to find the space, you're yeah. looking over there and his head's down and all he's too, he's too busy doing trying to do tricks or trying to beat this yeah. the defender with the, the same thing. It's, it's, it's over recycling. by then. Yeah, it's over. Yeah, and you have, yeah. to, you have to keep recycling your run. And by the time you recycle your run, it's also allowing the, your opponents to defensively get their entire shape set. And yeah. By then, it's like Hoyland's up against two or three defenders. And the yeah, box. instead of having, you know, like a pot, you know, a 1v1 or whatever. You, yeah, like he just said, the box is just congested and, and it, you know. Yeah. So with with the new, with, uh, there's a lot, there's been a lot of changes with, like, with the coaching staff, as you and I talked about earlier. Uh, you have another story coming in, and then if it ever yeah, of set pieces. But, you know, plus you know, not only you know, just the um, you know, excited about the shift in tactics and all that. It's I guess even just from a nostalgic standpoint. I mean, it's pretty cool to see him back there again. Because from everything I was reading or whatever, it's not like he did not have opportunities to be a uh, you know, a full time or a manager at other at other teams. So he yeah. obviously Burnley, wanted to. Burnley he obviously wanted to come. You know. No, definitely. I think Burnley was really interested in to replace Vincent Company. Um and they he just they ended up turning him down to Kim I think the the pull of Man United was just too good for him. So mm -hmm. it's great to have him back. Uh, I think he'll do wonders for the likes of Hoyland and I, I don't know where Xerxes I don't know if they're gonna play Xerxes White or they're gonna put him up top. Like I'm not too sure. I haven't really Well, really I mean, it. I it will it'll be interesting, you know. Uh, what the lineup looks like, or the starting eleven looks like, and the you know the charity shield match because I mean, uh, I'm assuming Hoyland's not going to be there. I mean, obviously, you know, if he was, if he, you know, if he's fully fit and healthy or whatever, he's he's definitely starting. So I'm curious what it'll be. Yeah, I'll see him here. So I'm just curious where they're going to fit him on, just because they have, like I said, we mentioned the, the like the likes of Anthony and Sancho still there. You have Rashford, Garnacho, mm -hmm. uh. I'm mad. It's, that's three. That's three that played pivotal roles last year. Well, mm -hmm. two at least. Garnacho and 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 I'm mad. Yeah. Right? Um, especially in the against Liverpool in the quarter final. But the, I think right now we, we mentioned it earlier that I think Ten Hag is just so scared of getting back to that whole problem of like not having all players fat. Yeah. So, which which sort well, of transition does? Yeah, I was going to say, you know, you mentioned something about trying to carry four players at each position. I mean, in today's game, that's really hard, if not impossible, to do that, you know? Not exactly. You know, it's... like, you think of the old Uniteds as, like, you know, especially the 90s team is, like, you know, just in the forward position. It's, like, <laughs> probably, like, four bonafide starters on just about any team that they could just pull off the bench, you know? Like, that's oh, no, pretty don't. difficult to do in today's game. Yeah. Well, all you have to do is look back at the two teams that, that won the Champions League under Ferguson. Both times he had four forwards. Uh, yeah. In 99, he had Cole, York, Sharon, and Solskjaer. Yeah, in 2008, yep. he had Rooney, Tevez, Berber, and Aldo. Yep. So, like, he had, that's four players. But, like, the thing is that Ferguson was great. That was man management. And the previous problem, I think, Ten Hag might, might be getting hit with if you keep buying players and really, uh, so creating this, I wouldn't say creating animosity between players. I don't want to say that because he, I team morale is high enough for that, and they're all professionals. But he, he's, his number not only does he have to get the tactics right here, but he's also has to his man management's got to have to be, be spot on because there's going to be too many players that are going to want to sit and play every match. And mm -hmm. that, with the amount of players in the, in the squad that we're bringing in, that's not going to happen. Like right now, yeah. you hear all these transfer rumors, and every time you hear a transfer rumor, you see right next to it said. But it's only going to happen when, well, if United sell one to two players. Like, yeah, they have the, to sell. They have to sell somebody. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, like the the like you mentioned there, the Moroccan right back from Bayern. He's agreed personal terms. United earlier today, but from what I've heard, is that they can only bring him in if Armand Basaka leaves. Yeah, so, that's what. Yeah, that's you know they. I think they're trying to get fifteen million for him, or you know, yeah. something along those lines. But yeah, exactly. I mean, it's it's contingent on him leaving or another play, player going. Yeah. So uh, I've heard that 
uh, what's uh, West Ham still be in for Armand Basaka and Crystal Palace are interested in maybe even bringing him back as well. Mm-hmm. They did that with Zaha, with Wufu Zaha. So yeah, no reason why they can't do it Armand Basaka. But yeah, uh, with with the injuries that we went, like, you know, went through last year, like you mentioned, there were sixty six injuries. Um, I read an article earlier with our good old uh, a former guest of ours, uh, the senior reporter from the Manchester Evening News, Samuel Lookers, and. He has a theory that, um, and I, I definitely agree with it, that the theory is that United's continuance to completely overlook the position of a, of a new fitness coach into the first team is maybe the reason why there's constant injury problems. Like It's the same, it's the same uh, fitness coach that's been there since Solskjaer. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's insane that, you know, basically we went through this whole review process at the end of the season with Ineos, and, you know, I'm hoping they looked at this. And if they didn't, then they need to have their freaking head examined because, um, you know, something something needs to change. Um, I, I, re- I, re- I read the same article as well. And, you know, he wasn't even calling to, you know, sack him or fire him or whatever you want to call it. He was saying maybe another person with a different opinion where they could both collaborate and look at this and say what are we doing why is this happening and assess the situation which i totally agree with because whatever we're doing is not working no exactly like and that's what i meant like we both were talking about like the, uh, he's trying to get a lot of players into certain positions but is he learning from is ten hag learning from his previous mistakes of you know not having squad depth i, I think yes but is he learning from the mistakes of not no not literally addressing the elephant in the room which is there's something wrong with the training the training yeah you gotta you gotta wrong. fix fix the root of the issue first okay. sure yeah, exactly. squad death a hundred squad death is very important but you, you gotta fix the root of the co- i mean injuries are always going to happen but 66 last year like that's excessive like that's I'm insane and like you said, we're not at the end of July. We're already too deep. Of, uh, too yeah, of honestly, I'm at the point, like, I mean, I'm all for the players, obviously, and they need to get match fit and all that sort of stuff. But it's like, I'll, I'll almost be like, just bring up the bring up the reserve, the youth academy, and let them play. I just want to get through this preseason injury-free and unscathed. Yeah, exactly. But So I don't know what's going on. Um, It's definitely something that, and you and I talked offline about this. The, the, the Neos group, when they came in and did the season review with Ten Hag, they put they, they used the high injury lust, like the high number of injuries, on the uh, uh, as a reason why one of the one of the reasons why they decided to keep him at the club, saying mm-hmm. that like, they want they want to put him in a position to succeed. And having sixty six injuries in a calendar year, calendar season is not, or sorry, a full season, not calendar, but full season doesn't really allow him to really project what his philosophy is, what his tactics mm-hmm. want to be. And right now we're back to the same thing. So it's like they're, it's the whole, let's just see what happens. Let's not change anything and see if something changes. I mean, like it's like the, the, the that whole, yeah. Old, like the people yeah. say sometimes the definition of insanity is trying to say, yeah, the exactly. Ring and yeah, exactly. Puzzle. Yeah, basically, so, it, you know, they're, you know, trying to solve or fix everything else, but, you know, not going to the root of the issue. I don't know. Maybe they'll, Maybe they'll look at something before the start of the season. I mean, probably too late at this point to probably do it. But I mean, yeah, I, I, God Almighty, I, yeah, I, I just hope that this is not indicative of how the rest of the season is going to go. Uh, I'm praying, man. Uh, same here. But like I said, like we we talked uh, in a few podcasts back, we talked about how United brought in Gary O'Driscoll, uh, the mm-hmm. head of sports science at United. He brought him in from Arsenal. He was at Arsenal. No, for a long time, for like 13, 14 years. And uh, they brought him on. And he was getting some of the flack. And I actually said that, you know, that he, he might have something to do with it because they you know they approved for Shaw to come back early. And then we talked about Shaw come, came out and did his interview before the Euros saying, hey, yep. I wasn't 100% fit, but they almost sort of told me, like, I have to play. And I, I didn't want it. And then I re-aggravated it. Same with Licha. Licha came back a little bit mm-hmm. and re-aggravated the injury. It was like for a few more, a few more weeks, almost a few months. But I, I think by the time it gets to Driscoll's team, which is the, you know, the doctors, the medical team, the sports science, by the time the, the damage has already been done, the injuries already occurred. So like their, their job is to fix the, fix the injury. Yeah. It's the fitness coach's 
Like, yeah, they got to know when to, to from happening. exactly say, OK, maybe we are pushing you too hard or we need to, you know, lo- you know, you know lighten, lighten up a, a little bit. Because, I mean, you, you know, you do you definitely do need recovery time. I mean, I mean, uh, just for us, I mean, we're, we're obviously we're not professional athletes, but, you know, you go to the gym four or five days a week and, you know, So you need those, you need that one or two days off to rest your muscles or whatever. So, yeah, I mean, you know, if you're, if the training sessions, of course you needed, uh, you needed intense to learn or whatever, but you know, maybe they should have that a day, uh, you know, rest or something. I I don't know, man. They just need, they need to, they need to look at at everything because whatever they're doing isn't working. No, no. Yeah. A hundred percent. I think one of the things that and no Jurgen Klopp said it Pep Guardiola said it a lot of the continental managers that came in from Europe they came in and they they're used to having a, a winter break now the Premier League in, introduced a somewhat of a winter break this past year yeah uh they blamed that for the high injuries um but I, I think at this this point the game's evolving at such a high pace that mm-hmm. that almost every player needs to have pace and needs to have this you no know, physique that the fast twitch muscles and everything else, all the yeah, different, yeah. All the different, all the different like, you know, physiological kind of stuff that they need to be able to compete at the highest level. And I think what's going on is the game's evolving. I think some of these fitness coaches and some of the, you know, the, the medical teams around them, I don't think they're evolving. I think they're still basing on the stuff that they were doing, you know, late 90s, mid 2000s. So yeah, if, you know, 15, 20 years ago. Yeah, which that very well could be a case. I mean, I don't. I don't, I don't know that, I mean, I'm not going to sit here and pretend that I know that, but yeah, I mean, they, they might, they might not be still, or they might still be doing the old shit that's 20 years old, you know? I, I, I don't know. I just know that, no, I, I agree with, I agree somewhat with Sam's articles, uh, article when he mentioned that it's just, a, it's the glaring change that needed that everyone talked with needed to happen. And it's the one change. They've changed yeah. So one every thing position. that didn't happen. Yeah. yeah, they've changed goalkeeper coaches. They brought mm-hmm. in the first team coaches. They brought yep. in no, yep, uh, a, a set piece coach. They brought yeah, in the uh, all yeah, yep, all they, these they brought... all these new coaches, everything, yeah. you know. Yeah. And the one thing that has that has been a constant has been the same fitness coach. Now, do I want him burnt tarred and feathered in public square for what's going on? No, nah, I don't want that. But uh, what I do, I do would love to know what analytics, what 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 kind of reviews are they doing with the club in terms of like okay no they had to have sat down so they got like guys yeah just, there's there's, there's no way that stuff. wasn't brought yeah there's no way that wasn't brought up in the in the end of season review like, there's, there's no there's just no way injuries. Yeah, mm-hmm. there's 66 injuries no if it would have been 68 i would have been happy with that because that would have been 1968 would have been a good remembrance for <laughs> yes. the european cup final united won in 4-1 <laughs> back in 1968 but it was 66, well i mean so. hey d i guess technically we're still in the same calendar year so we're at 68 now with hoyland oh, yeah, and uh, yeah you there know you there you go so 68 so maybe maybe that's maybe but maybe it might be a maybe it might be a little uh a little godsend all of a sudden maybe no, yeah. no more injuries occur but We'll see in terms of what's going to occur with the team throughout the year. With is Ten Hag going to rotate his team? Like this past year, he, he didn't. Um, he didn't really rotate them in, in, in the in matches that didn't really matter. And I mean by that, I mean you no, know, like the League Cup. Is it a nice yeah, topic? Yeah, yeah. It sort of is like a, it, a lot of the bigger teams. Like you know, unless you win it, you call it a Mickey Mouse Cup. So, yeah, exactly. I mean, it's I, you know, most of the time I like I remember years ago, I, you know, especially when Fergie was there, it's like a lot of times he was playing academy kids or yeah. kids that, you know, were looking for call up and to get some first team experience or whatever, which I'm totally fine. I mean, I'm not knocking the competition, but I mean, as far as the the pecking order of what's important, that's at the very bottom of, of you know, of importance. Yeah. Well, it's funny you say because I read a story and I, I remember hearing it years ago and I heard another one. It was, I heard it again this year, this week. It was Ferguson, uh, and this is in relation to like you know, how he always rotated his squad and played younger mm-hmm. players. He said he, uh, he played in the League Cup, um, a match at Upton Park, um, and the, uh, he, he played like a bunch of youngsters, a bunch of the reserves, and they were getting, and the United were getting battered by West Ham 4 0. And there was about 10, 15 minutes left, and he said, I'll throw Wes Brown on. Wes Brown needs some, no, he needs some fitness, <laughs> needs to get some no, yeah. under his belt. Uh-huh. And uh, he goes, what really annoyed me, I'm already getting, I'm already getting completely 
battered shellacked. By, yeah, by, by by the West Ham fans who are notorious for their you no know, their their banter. Mm -hmm. so I'm sitting and getting that, and then all of a sudden Wes Brown stand at the halfway line about to come on. And it was what really got really got got up me was their assistant manager, and he named him. I can't remember his name. I thought I had said. Uh, they looked at Wes Brown saying, "What are you going to do?" No, you're going on. Well, that was to say, like, it's 4 0. Yeah. You're a defender. So, for yeah. instance, I don't. He goes, he turned out, he was like, that really annoyed me to the point where like, he made it a point. He goes, you know what? He, he went down there and he said, we're going to come back to this place and we're going to relegate them. Or, no, sorry. I mean, he didn't go back. He didn't go back to right. He goes, <laughs> yeah. you just have to come to, you usually, you have to come to Old Trafford at, the end, of, at the end of the season. Yeah. And it was, I want to say it was a 2000, 2007, 2000, or 2006, 2007 season because mm -hmm. I think it was when Tevez. Yeah, um, yeah. Tevez has same thing the next season, or I could be wrong, but it was back yeah. then. And uh, he turned around and he said that. He goes, I'm, he goes, I remember thinking to myself, he goes, these bastards need to come to Old Trafford and I'm, we're going to relegate them. And he goes, all of a sudden, it's 30 something minutes in the match and we're down to you. Know, he goes, Oh, Jesus, there goes, there goes me being a man of my word. <laughs> yeah. so, he goes, and, so at halftime, he goes, I, I threw out the, entire, all, the whole playbook, threw out the tactics, everything. I took off Patrice, I think he said Patrice Sevra. I don't know if it was, I think it was. So it was around when Patrice was playing, and uh, he put Ryan Giggs left back, <laughs> and you netted one four two, and West Ham, and he relegated yeah. West Ham. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, but I know, but but back then, like Ferguson knew, like he knew how to prioritize certain certain competitions. He knew he knew what it meant to let players get rest, like you rightly rightly so uh, mentioned earlier. Ferguson understood that. And that was his. That's it. That was his mad management. Like Ferguson was almost ahead of the curve. Like you hear over here with the NBA, they talk about load management. Yeah, and yeah. Players are playing. So, so Ferguson almost had that mentality for his club back. For the players back then, he had that load management, like giving the players rest, not prioritizing every competition. Um, because like, you know, we, and when and the and when he does prioritize almost every competition, he knows he has a squad depth. Like he did in '99, he won the treble. Yeah, yeah. He, he was what. Maybe eight inches away from one the trouble in, in, in two thousand eight when uh, oh, yeah Kiarik yeah yeah mm -hmm. and explicit I was at the yep. match at Old Trafford against Portsmouth. Kiarik yep. somehow did, couldn't score from a from a yard out, and then Milan Barros who tries to go around uh, Krushak and didn't mm -hmm. and fair enough had to run him jumping nets and yep. we all know what happened. He buried the penalty. You know, lost one nil. Um, yep. and then Portsmouth went on to win the FA Cup that year. United could have done it, but they didn't. That yeah, would, yeah, it would have been the second travel. The travel, but. But he, but Ferguson knew then that he had to have a squad depth. So we'll see with with Ten Hag this season. He's got a decent amount of players, and um, I do agree with your mindset of bringing up some of the academy players as well, letting them play, or at least bringing them up in terms of training. Well, so, yeah, yeah training. training. I mean, I think it. You know, even if they're not going to play regularly or whatever, but just being around the first team and seeing how they prepare and you know the you know the mindset and all that stuff i think that's all things that they should be exposed to and if they are good enough i mean it's you know you integrate them in slowly and yeah i i think that would be great i mean because we've already seen it um you know what Garnacho and uh, Mano. So I mean, obviously, you know, Ten Hag has a history of, of promoting the young of the youngsters. So yeah, I, th I mean, I think that would be really cool to see that. No, exactly. And the one thing that he's he's done that I th I, I liked is uh, I, I mentioned in the Rosenberg match that uh, the goalkeeper mm. Oh yeah, Man, he was unbelievable in that match. It was. I, it was almost embarrassing. It could have easily been four or five, maybe even six nil, if it wasn't for him. Like I mean, the say yeah. a big man was saying. So he rightfully at Ten Hag, obviously he sent him out in loan, so he's way in loan. And then uh, Young Hugo, uh, the guy I don't know if you've seen the Rangers match, but uh, he scored the second. He took it really well off the crossbar and on. Almost on the crossbar, and that was he did a brilliant. He's way out in loan too. So I think Ten Hag has uh, no sending those two out in loan. I agree with. I would have would have preferred to see Hugo stay, but with Zerky coming in. And now, obviously, he wants to put, you know, have Hoyland get a lot of minutes under his belt. And then yeah, yeah. But right with Sancho possibly staying, he might be able to put Sancho. He might be able yeah, to I mean, yeah, it left. just probably wasn't realistic for him to, you know, break through, at least not yeah. this year. Exactly. So I think maybe within the next year, like, you no, know, Sancho might move on. Sancho could move on now. Anthony might move on. Mm -hmm. um, and it opens up it opens up more opportunities for the likes of Hugo to get pushed on. Um, because he might put Zerky out, out wide 
you might, I don't, I might, play, you yeah. might play him left wing, you might play him right wing. Geez, for all we know, Rashford could move on um, unless he really kicks into the season. So far, what I've seen in preseason, um, he showed glimpses, but he's still not the Rashford that we know. He yeah, is. I mean, I, I mean, I guess I don't want to look into it too much because it's just preseason. But yeah, I mean, he hasn't he hasn't really looked in per- like in, he hasn't looked great. I mean, I wouldn't say yeah. he's looked bad, but he hasn't looked like he's ready to knock in thirty goals for us this year. No, nah, exactly. So, and I think maybe that's maybe that was another reason why they signed Zerzi because they were saying like, okay. No, Rashford being left wing, Garnacho, no, is definitely mm-hmm. a good starter. Um, mm-hmm. Did they really did? Did they really want to put all that weight and pressure on Rashford? Maybe Rashford thought like so. Maybe they brought in Zerzi to sort of have that route. They sort of really yeah, push that, Rashford now. They, yeah, you're yeah. Somebody, you're somebody coming on now, competing for your spot. Before yeah. Rashford would have been the first, even despite playing absolutely just horribly. Last yeah, season, yeah. Was, no, um, he was still starting a lot of matches. He rarely got dropped. Uh, the only time he got dropped was when he did this little Belfast you no know, tequila escapade, <laughs> and um, but all in that, and then he must train. I think he was late for training or something. He showed up late for training. Yeah, it was it was a but, yeah few yeah, things. It was, yeah, it was all, it was all it, the, two, the only times he was dropped was for off field problems. That's what, I'm, that's yeah. what I'm trying to say. So when it comes when it comes to football uh, reasons, he Rashford would never drop. So maybe bringing Zerxi in might be a it might be that little catalyst that kickstarts Rashford back into where he needs yeah, to be because yeah, it might like somebody breathing down his neck for the starting because. If Hoyland's back by the start of the season with his putting his hamstring injury behind him, um, then Hoyland's going to start up front. I would hope to say Rashford starts left wing, right yeah. wing. Yeah, more than likely going to be a Garnacho. Garnacho. Um, um, I would say you know you'll have Bruno there, obviously. Um, and then I would say, yeah, um, probably I would like Cassie. to see Mano or Casemiro, I guess. Yeah. Well, it all depends to every guard day if he doesn't come on. Um, well, yeah, I mean, I yeah, I think it would be, I mean, in a perfect will, yeah, I would like to see Ugarte and I guess like a Mano or something. But I mean, I don't know if that's, I don't know if that's going to happen. I mean, I guess that's kind of a good uh, segue into you know getting into some transfers or whatever. But yeah, I mean, I yeah, I would I would love to see him because I mean, we we need a, a defensive midfielder. I mean. I, and I can't really figure out what's going on with Casemiro either. I mean, he's been with the team, you know, all preseason. I mean, you hear different, you know, rumors or whatever, but I, I mean, it doesn't really sound like anything is concrete, you know? No, it doesn't. No. So, for the guard day, the last I heard was, and you and I talked about this online, like it seems that, you no, know, he was away in the Copa America. He's probably on holidays at the minute. They've agreed yeah. personal terms with him. So, I'm not sure if both PSG and United said, "Listen, no, you you agree personal terms with them. That's that's a big point. Let's just let him enjoy his holiday, and then when he comes back, and, and we'll really for, get down we'll, the business. Yeah, well, then we'll, PSG can say we'll tell him what we want, no, from him. Like we, we if we want him to stay or go, and then we can then start really hashing out the negotiations of what you know who you want there. Like I would, I would love if they turned around and said, "Listen, do you want to just do a straight swap for Casemiro and Garte? Like." A PSG sort of, yeah. I think I think the French league would be perfect for Casemiro. Like Verratti went there and before yeah. he went to Saudi Arabia and played really well. Uh, but again, PSG also have Fabio Maurice as well playing number eight for them. So I don't know if they're going to have two. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, uh, but well, right now that it, it seems like it's just sort of it's that it's stagnant like with with that it's almost like yeah there's similar. nothing nothing really happening you know on on either either front Ugarte or Casemiro I mean I you know I'm not really hearing anything I mean I I hope that I hope you're right because I, I would like to see him uh see see us bring him in I think he would be a big addition to that midfield which obviously we definitely need um yeah. man who the hell know who know who knows though maybe Casemiro figures it out though. I don't. I don't know, man. I. His I don't know. Yeah, I'm, I, I'm not. I'm not disagreeing with you that uh, that at all. Yeah. So, like for example, like I remember somebody was arguing the other day. I can't remember who it was, but they were arguing about like about saying how that Casemiro's legs might be gone, but United United still need him because like look at look at Tony Kroos and Luka Modric at Real Madrid. Like their their legs aren't the same. But I was like, mm-hmm. There's a difference for them. Real Madrid have people like. 
Valverde sprinting around the place. They have Camavinga sprinting yeah, around the place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no. I can't, I'm gonna butcher his name, but it's like Tusha Mini. Yeah, they're like, yeah, they're yeah. Like, yeah. In France. like mm -hmm. they're all young. They're all like 21. They're all young like, kids. I, I yeah, know, they're just they're they're able to they're able to do it. Yeah, they got they're, they're, you know uh, Energizer Bunny. They just keep yeah. going. So they don't expect Tony Cruz and like Luca Modric to do the the run the the dirty work, but let them do the dirty work and let like it's like I, I can't remember who said it, but said that there there there's two types of players in the world, and there's channel movers. And then there's piano players. <laughs> so like the piano yes. movers, yes, are are like the the camera. They're the ones. The yeah, they're so, they're put they're putting in the grunt work. Exactly. With the piano players are the likes mm -hmm. of Tony Cruz, Luka Modric, mm -hmm. and so, yep. so Um I'm not putting Casemiro in there, and, and Tony Cruz and Luka Modric is no arena. But I'm just like, I'm just explaining like they're very like just Casemiro's legs. Seem to yeah, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I understand what you're saying and it makes, it's a valid point. I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I you know, based, based off of what we've seen, it seemed like it really dropped off as far as just, you know, his age and, you know, it seems like it's definitely, he's in the back nine of his career. I would say this or yeah, say that. Exactly. So like with, they, a lot of people can blame Ten Hag's tactics of exploiting his lack of pace, and that's why he's you know United's midfield gets run through. But with United, new we mentioned it before, United need a very mobile center defensive midfielder. Like the way Declan Rice does at, at Arsenal, uh, a lot of times he's left on himself on an island, and he's able to just do the work because he does have that engine, he does have the speed. Yeah, the, yeah. You know, the, the athleticism to get from point A to point B, and it allows Odegaard to you know, to go on and do his his thing. So. I would hope that we can get into Garde, but from what I'm hearing too, there's rumors that United are already have a plan B in place. With uh, he's a young, uh, he's 25 year old Real Sociedad midfielder, uh, Martin. Oh yeah, Zubimendi. Zub yeah, I believe that. Yeah. So he plays old midfielder. Uh, very. Uh, he's supposed to be a great player. Like they, they, a lot of people thought it would be like very simple plays this role, very similar to Rodri does for Man City. Mm -hmm. uh, his release clause is somewhere between like. It's around like sixty million, and you need to talk about doing like triggering that triggering that race calls if Ugarte does not. Uh, like, yeah, if it doesn't. Ball. Yeah, yeah. And um, the 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 rumors are that United are going to go ahead and just you know, just pivot and go towards another another player. That... Well, I mean, you know, you can I guess put all your eggs in one. Yeah, sure. In an ideal, perfect world, would it be fantastic to have Ugar sign Ugarte? But I mean. If it doesn't happen, I mean, yeah, they they definitely need to bring somebody in, um, yeah, because uh, uh, you know we we definitely need a midfield player desperately. Yeah, no, a midfield player that can complement Manu and complement mm -hmm. you know, like I yeah. love Christian Eriksen, but I don't think he's not the solution. Scott McTominay, he's in no, yeah, he, he's, he's yeah. not the solution either. Yeah, it looks. So, I I saw. I can't remember who it was. There were rumors that he's getting pretty close to win a deal with somebody. I can't remember who it was. I thought, I remember seeing West Ham were supposed to be in for Scott yeah. for like 20 million. And yeah. Then, but like, no, he's he's out, he's out, he's playing in the preseason right now. He's been a training mm -hmm. team, but I haven't really seen any other concrete, um, any concrete uh, rumors, any concrete yeah. headlines that says he's on his way out. But with the, uh, I don't know, with, with, with with the other all the other transfer regime I have going on, like we mentioned, like we, we mentioned there, the good old uh, Mateus Delit. Mm -hmm. From from what I've heard now is that again, that United are you agree personal terms with the player. Uh, he's <laughs> he's interested in coming to United, um, and he's interested in the project of playing uh, of play, uh, the, the opportunity and the project of playing under. Ten Hag once again, mm -hmm. with, like he did back in his Ajax days. Yep. Um, but again, it seems to be the two uh, two clubs or the clubs just can't agree with on, on price. And is this is this a repercussion of you no know, past transfer dealings that United and I are, are feeling, like, facing the consequences for? Like, is it you know the fact that United always seem to overpay for players, so now teams are like really digging their heels and saying, "Well, we set a price, and we want you to match it." So yeah, what I'm hearing with the lit is. There's 50 million is what they want. 50 to 55. United are trying to get to the 50 million point, but they're trying to put a lump sum fee of around 30, 35. Yeah, yeah. With add-ons of appearances because yes. everyone, know, everyone knows the late, he's, he's injury prone. So I think United are trying to protect themselves in that aspect by saying, listen, 
we're not going to pay 50 million for someone that no, it has a history of uh, injuries. What we can do is we can give you, you no, know, say 65% of that. And then the other 35% is going to come in, in installments of add-ons and performance. Yeah. Performance. Yeah. Ba- like, performance if, metrics and different things yeah, like that. Exactly. So if he, if he plays say 25 matches this season for United or he doesn't miss a certain amount of, a certain amount of matches through injury. That, yeah. That, that triggers the add on that then you'd edit those three hundred or I'm sorry, Bayern Munich, uh, being, 15. Uh, yeah. So, but no, uh, you and I talked last night about, uh, about a few things that the only thing that may, it might be a wrench in the gears because, uh, you, Bayern Munich just signed, uh, they sent a brand new, um, center back, Haruki. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's a center they, back. That they were, yeah, they might not be. Yeah, they might not be looking to make that yeah. move now. Exactly. So they might turn around and say, "What am I? Like, we, we might not. We might actually need him. Yeah, might not we. Start, but we need him for. But we depth. need. Yeah, we need him. Yeah, exactly. So and with with United two, you're negotiating with. Uh, no, was it? Uh, was it New Sir? Yeah, Mas- yeah, Mas- yeah, 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 yeah. Mm-hmm. Or Maz Masri, I think is the new Maz. Um, Ma- yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not. I'm gonna. Yeah, bu- I'm like, gonna butcher that last name. I know that. Yeah. I mean, I've heard of it. Just I can't. I can't. Like for some reason, just I can't phonetically say it. Yeah. But, um. Yeah, they, they agree personal terms with him as well. So there's two two team two players with Bayern Munich that they both agree terms, but both of them um, obviously aren't starters there. Uh, which I I, I think is interesting yeah because you usually, usually United seem to always want to go after players who are pushing the the boundaries of being yeah you know, world class, but mm-hmm. uh, again, they they neither one of them started for Bayern Munich last season. They played, uh, I think, they played in that um, that match, that semi final match against yes. Real Madrid. Yeah, yeah. So because uh, he he was one of the more vocal players about the offside goal because he was, he was the one scored scored it. Scored it. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, a lot of rumors going around. A lot of, like, yeah, I I mean that's where you get the especially you know this time of year you just never really know you hear a lot of things. You know, what is what, you know, it's just like a revolving door of transfer rumors. I, I mean, I, I'm sure as we probably, I would say maybe in the, as we get closer to the actual first match, I'm sure, or hopefully some things will, you know, move. But uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, you know, probably just kind of in a holding pattern for right now as far as that. I mean, yeah kind of sucks because it's just like you want you know you want to you, you know you want that you know you want the new shiny toy basically and you want to get excited about that i i don't know about yeah. you but i always especially like when one of my teams brings in a new player i'm always excited at, you know i want to watch them and you know see how they play or whatever and then you get excited about them then some then they turn out to be terrible or whatever and the guy's been there for like a month and you're ready to write them off or whatever it's yeah. like the emotional roller coaster, man. Oh, exactly. I remember. Jesus, I remember whenever you had signed Pucci Severa and Nemanja Vidic. <laughs> yeah. In the January transfer window. I think the mm-hmm. like, Severa came in from Monaco, and I think Big Vidic came in from. I want to say was it Spartak? Yeah, I um, believe. Yeah, I believe so. Yeah. Yeah. So no, like they, they, they were two. Like I, I, they both came in for single digits. Uh, when I say single digits, I think, I think like seven or eight each kind of thing it was yeah like, i was mean like a, which is kind of bizarre <laughs> right you know yeah, in today's I game i could be wrong maybe if i just came up for 15 for no that was his number yeah i know i know i know it was definitely there was uh, i i mean just, well even if it's 15 i mean well, jesus what do you think he would be that he would get right now my god oh no i know that but i'm just i'm just, i remember i remember, I remember right. back in january and i remember thinking like i remember watching pitches ever pitches ever played left wing for monaco when they went mm-hmm. that, that champions league running uh and then we unfortunately lost to uh, lost to Porto. We were good old Jose Mourinho's Porto in two thousand. Yep. Um, and they joined United. I think it was the fall in January, and he came in, and I, he, both him and Vidic got absolutely butchered by the British media. Like for that six months, they, they, mm-hmm. five months they played from January. Everyone thought like Gregson. No, there's a reason why they were only cost this much. They're not good. They're not the players. They're not. Forward. the yep. And all of a sudden, then like they were the like give it a season, and they were like the first first names on the team sheet. So I agree with you. I'm I'm looking forward to seeing some of these players. Um, I'm glad that United got some of the deals done early. Uh, because over the last few years, it's always been 
players well yeah it's been yeah it's uh, like yeah overpay for them and it's like right before the season start and you know you start the season and you haven't really had a chance to integrate them into the team and you know get acclimated learn the tactics of the of the manager and all that sort of stuff so yeah i mean um, I mean, I, I was gonna say, I mean, you are, but you know, well, we all know how we all know how that stories go. But yeah, I mean, at least we've got like a Xerxes or whatever, you know. Yeah. Well, I felt I still I, I said this before to a, a few. I remember having a couple of chats with, with other you know fans and you no, know, my follow. For example, I remember saying that I think one of the biggest problems at United this summer um, was the whole dragged out soap opera drama that was um the ten hag is he staying or is he not going? oh yeah two, yeah for like two weeks I, uh, yep two, almost yep. three weeks we had, we had to wait to wait and i agree yep so i actually did... i think it was harry Maguire recently in the preseason store um i think he had was talking with uh sam uh and he was saying that that was a major distraction yeah, uh, I, I read that leading up leading up to that fake up final and all right. that he i i'm almost positive it was harry Maguire who or said that no he did i remember i read the same article he said it was like he goes up he's sitting here lying if i didn't say it was a distraction like some of the players that obviously you know we want to play for the manager and then they're, they're hearing that he's going to be gone because of lack of performance and lack of results but i think that's two to three weeks that you had it lost in the transfer window and what i mean by that is that instead of turning around and talking with you no know, Tucho or Pochettino or you know, even mm-hmm. Ruben Southgate, if they did yep. turn and said, listen, we're going to keep him. You no, know, he's, he's staying. Yep. We're going to honor his contract. We're actually going to give him exactly. an extension on his contract. They could have then sat down for those two or three weeks and say, all right, fellas, let's get, let's get a head start in the season. Before yeah, exactly. Because it's before, Exactly. Because you know none of those players are going to want to deal with contracts going through the Euros. And exactly. I, I hundred per- they could have had two weeks and who knows? They well, I mean they might have had a Euro Euro and a Xerxes deal. They might have had that done earlier or whoever else. You never know, man. I agree we did lose out two weeks on that. And that's yeah. super frustrating. Yeah, because like you know the, we we t- we we talked about it in a previous podcast that Ineos group had to go meet with Ten Hag on his holiday and they granted mm-hmm. Ten Hag did go on a holiday right after the FA Cup. No, and rightfully so. Everyone's everyone's entitled to some good old TLC and some PTO. But mm-hmm. um, I just I think if they were to turn around and tell them right out the FA Cup saying, "Do I congratulations, great job. We have no interest whatsoever bringing anyone else in. We think you're the man for a job. You've delivered another major trophy. You know what we want to do is we want to sit down before we go on holiday. Let's just do let's just do our, uh, no our review this yeah. season. Yeah, let's do a quick uh, you know two three days or however long you know nothing crazy, quick season review and. Let's iron out some targets. Exactly, let's iron out the targets because, like, that was the whole thing. You know, sort of bragged about where they were going to ha- go ahead and g- they were, they were going to give him three targets per position. Remember that mm-hmm. they said, "Hey, we're going to give him three and he had to choose his, his his favorite option of those three. I'm not seeing it. So, like, no, for center back, for example. So the center back was options were Delit and Euro. So did they, did they give them those? Or did Jason Wilcox and his infinite wisdom from Southampton? Yeah. Days? <laughs> given that or was that Ten Hag that went ahead and you no know, like or or was it you no know, influence from Sir you no know, Sir Radcliffe? He, he, he yeah. Teams. And I'm sure he's went to a couple of matches. He probably probably heard some rumblings about your I, I I mean honest I, I I wouldn't that wouldn't surprise me. I mean have you you know having that you know affiliation influence. or familiarity with the, you know League One team that I'm sure there was probably someone that said, Hey Jim uh, take a kid, take a look at this Lenny kid. He might be the real deal. Exactly. So, no, I, I'm not really. We we went. We literally dissected that in your plan uh, mm-hmm. in this podcast, and I'm just I haven't seen it really go into fruition the way they explained it was going to happen. Um, the new CEO Omar was going to come in and say, "Oh, mm-hmm. plans are going to get more transparency. We're going to get more transparency. Plans yep. are going to get more visibility. They're going to be voices are going to be heard, and so forth." Like. Right now, like I get it, we're preseason, but as a United fan, we've we've went through a lull period since 2013. Like we haven't won the league, we haven't even got close to being in, to winning the Champions League. No, we won the FA Cup and League Cup. That's right. Yep, we've uh, we won the Europa League under under Jose Mourinho. We got the final yep. with Solskjaer. But yep. to be to be like 
I, the best way I could describe United right now is the same way Liverpool were in the in the nineties and and two thousands, where like they were they weren't getting really close to the winning. Yeah, league, they, but they, but they they were. were they, yeah, they they were always right on the cusp of yeah, you they, know. They popped up with a we popped mm-hmm. up with an FA Cup or a League Cup like on mm-hmm. the Julio. They won the UEFA Cup. Mm-hmm. Uh, kind of like uh, a natter uh, mosquito that are like you know they're not regular regularly six you know winning or whatever but occasionally they get you good exactly and that's that's seriously what i feel like united are right now they're going through that low period where like liverpool did after after the success of the 80s they went through the 90s of mm-hmm. not really challenging they won a yeah. couple of fa cups couple of league cups uh they won the champions league then in league. Five. yep and then they got no they got back to the the final again in 2007, lost AC Milan. But then they, they challenged United, they got close to it, but they, did, they were challenging United in the 2008 season when you know, Torres was supposed to, you know, was, had Vidic in his back pocket mm-hmm. and only scored three goals in his career against them. Um, but that's where United are right now. And it was just, I'm hoping now that United can go ahead and implement, like the Ineos group have, have came up with a good, a, a good plan. No, I want to see the plan integrated. Yeah, no, I so I like the plan. I'm just I'm, I guess, cautiously optimistic. I guess I, you know, I want to see it. I want to see the plan fully implemented. I mean, I know it's obvious. It's still early days. Uh, you know, Rome, you know, wasn't built in a day. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's so far it's off for a slow start and, you know, to go back what we were just talking about, I mean, I, you know, I do feel like they are not feel like they definitely dragged the foot and they cost us in this transfer window, um, by not making a, a decisive decision on 10 hacks st- uh, future after that FA cup. Yeah, no, exactly. Because like, every different, every manager they looked at, every manager was rumored has a completely different like philosophy, different tactics, yeah, different yeah, formations. Mm-hmm. So that so therefore every manager would have different targets. Transfer exactly. Targets. Well, yeah, I mean, and you know, probably they might not have liked you know who's currently on the roster. You're basically taking a, um, you know, a chopping block to the whole thing. Which I mean, I guess not. I mean, I'm that I'm talking about it out loud. I'm not you know, totally opposed. I mean, we hell going into this season or the end of this season, we were only talking about basically keeping three or four players, but I mean, yeah, I mean, you, you know, you already knew what you had. You had, you know, a season where you were, had, had success. He, you know, salvaged the season this past season with the FA cup. And, you know, it's, it's almost kind of telling too, because if you think about it, you know, especially like, you know, Pochettino and stuff is like, why aren't some of the, why aren't some of these guys really getting, you know, calls or why, you know, what's going on there, you know? Mm-hmm. No, I, exactly. So, yeah, we'll see. It's just one of those situations where, like you rightly said, Rome wasn't built in a day. I'm not expecting overnight success. Um, but the Indianapolis group didn't exactly get off to the right start in terms of uh, really, you know, solidifying the, yeah, they definitely didn't. Um, I I would say they did not set up this transfer window for the best opportunity to have to be successful. Exactly. Yeah. So like this is like they didn't solidify their 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 their, their plan in terms mm-hmm. of like, and, and they didn't endure themselves with the fans. It's almost, the it's almost it's like the they were afraid to make a decision. You know. I think it was. I think it was one. I don't think I don't think they're ever afraid of making a decision. I think what happens, I hate to say, it, but I don't. I think that some of the managers were just looking at the United project and were thinking, "Nah, I'm good." Like, I mean, that very well could. I mean, because I mean, it is a very, it, yeah, it would be a very extensive manager. rebuild. Yeah. Yeah. No, exactly. Like, no, good old Ralph Rag- Ragnick came out yeah. and said that that they needed open heart surgery, and it's evident they did, and. He he moved on and he did a great job with Austria, but mm-hmm. uh, but it just, it just proves that he's that there's previous managers and previous people at the club that did say what the wrongs were and they were just being ignored. Um, yeah, yeah. So you kind of you kind of look back and be like, you know, I, I guess they had the, they had the last laugh because ultimately, uh, you know, everything they were saying was spot on. Yeah, exactly. So it's my Ineos was. Uh, dumpster fire to to actually make it so we'll see <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll have to wait and see but yeah uh, so far I, like yeah you never we'll know see. man yeah 
I hey, I even um uh uh you know dumpster fire. Speaking of dumpster fire, the Glazers. I heard uh Averin showed up to uh, SoFi the other night. It's, it's nice of him to make an appearance. Oh, he decided to leave the. Apparently, yeah, he was at the match. I guess. Not that I really care, but I, I mean, I guess he decided to do it because, uh, you know, he wouldn't get just absolutely destroyed uh, if he was at Old Trafford. Nah, exactly. He was more in a, he was more in his element here. Uh, for yes, you probably had copious amount of private security to a random where Old Trafford. I don't think you could have an entire army in front of you. I don't think it really mattered because <laughs> you know, he's not really, not really well, well, well liked in that that part of the world, and rightfully so. Nope. So nope. Yeah, it's just one of those situations we'll have to deal with. Yeah. All right. Well, you know, we're over an hour in. I think, you know, we covered just about everything we want to wrap wrapped, uh, in tonight's show. Um, I guess a little deep tease for the next pod. Obviously, we both want to get into, you know, basically the rumors and different things for the new, new stadium. The new Wembley of the North is how it's being phrased. Yeah. Um, so we will definitely be back next week to cover that. Uh, D, before we sign off, uh, give your social a plug. Yeah, it's good old DC.McGuigan uh, on Instagram. And I am at Keithip86, and we appreciate you listening tonight. And again, uh, tune in next week. We will have, uh, we'll go in a little bit about new stadium, and hopefully we have some new players next week. I don't know. I'm not uh, not that optimistic. But, uh, yep, thanks for listening, guys, and we'll talk to you next week. Yeah.